I am just going to brief you because a lot of people are from uh, teaching institutes uh, here, a lot of residents who are again in medical colleges here. So I'm just going to talk for the next not 15 minutes. I think I have to give that five minutes to Minu now. Uh, to say, he, uh, he, he, it's so interesting, no, you can't stop him. Uh, until it drops, you can't stop him. So <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll have to wait for it to drop. So, so we'll see whether I can finish earlier. But basically, I, I want to say how to do uh, a successful cataract surgery. No? Uh, 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 I don't know how far I have been successful, but uh, but still, no, we have been training a lot of people to be a successful cataract surgeon. So after every cataract surgery, no, we want to feel like this, no? as if we have, uh, uh, at least in the first few cases, you know, we feel very comfortable. And after that, you feel very comfortable if you have done a ton. Hmm? 100 cataracts. Uh, I don't know how many of you have felt it, but I know at least one person who is here has felt it. Of course, it's Minu and a uh, few of my colleagues who are here. You know, when you do a century, you feel like you are on top of the world. Uh, but the point is, I like these uh, uh, ads very much. And this, this ad I recently enjoyed. <laughs> Achrekar sir, or unke student ki, ek rupay mein hira tarahi jati hai. Ek simple si payment kuch bada kar jati hai. I think there are series of ads which are coming now from Google Pay. It's interesting. No, some I think there is learning from this also. Seeing a coach like that, I think it's so important that. Uh, we love to coach people. So I just want to cover in these areas. Now, how are you going to prepare yourself you know, the next stage of uh, executing in the form of uh, surgery in the operating room and also, uh, and also work on revising it. It's not that we have learned something and we are going to do that for the next 10, 20 years. Things are changing. Technology is changing. Techniques are changing. New improvisations keep happening. New ideas keep coming. But if you don't kind of embrace that, then I think we lose the benefit which we pass on to our patients. So this is the basic thing, you know, there are a lot of residents sitting here. I know there are 70% residents. So it's so important at some point, wherever you read, you know, I don't think anybody goes to the library to read on textbooks these days. You know, even uh, uh, Dr. Sushil Pani I see is reading on his mobile phone, okay. So either you read on your mobile phone, tablet, it doesn't matter, but you need to learn the basics. Try to understand the basics. There are amazing textbooks which cover, you know, and there are some amazing videos which explains you a lot of detail about the phaco dynamics or whatever you do in the eye. So it will be good to understand the basics and concepts. And when you come to this particular uh, technique of phaco multiplication, it's, it's, it's so important to know the machine what you're going to use. You now, what are the different parameters? How your phaco foot pedal works? Know, how your handpiece works. Uh, you, you don't have to be an engineer to understand a lot of things which is inside, you know, the outside of it. Like for example, if you see this LED screen, it's so beautiful. You know, when, you, when you find time, you go to the back and see. The back end is so complex, but the front end is made so simple. You know, that is how many of the machines which we use. But we should try to understand at least the front end, you know, what to press and what not to do. So, so these are some of the parameters, we'll not go into detail. But it's so important to understand the basics of power, vacuum, aspiration, flow rate, and how each uh, machine now kind of manipulates it or varies it in the form of active fluidics and a lot of other things which happens in the recent past. But the basic concepts are the same. So those days, now when uh, Minu and we were getting trained, now we we want to do more and more surgeries to get trained. Now I said. Iron case are money gumpa. You know, iron case one of our PCR a corpo. But that's not the case now. You know, it's a, the number of residents are increasing. The program is becoming bigger. The number of you no, know, I I I feel sad when I when I hear the word cutting chance. What is this cutting chance? Are you going to a saloon to learn cutting? Huh? I keep this word. I mean, hear this word again and again. See, you're going to operate on an eye, you know, in human eye, and you're going to give vision back. So it's not the number of cases we do, it's how we are going to 
train ourselves to perfect ourselves and to do the best for the patient so the the numbers may not be very big these days but if we train and coach ourselves with the best possible way i'm sure even with very minimal numbers we can do really successful procedures i have a, a resident who just completed from uh, salt lake you know sophia here and so many us residents come they do 100 200 takeouts in their career and after that many of them start practice a few of them go for fellowship but the point is how we are going to train them even if they are not going to do big numbers but still master the technique so one way is start somewhere you know we are very happy to support any medical college here to set up wet lab it's so important you know to have a nice wet lab you don't need an ex expensive uh, uh, simulators like this you know these are uh, simulators which are very expensive you know and many of the times you know i have even tried in simulators i i I've, i've interviewed people who have used simulators they are not very happy they are not like doing on a human eye you know whatever it be at the end of the day you know they, it's not like a flight simulator people who worked on flight simulators have worked on small incision simulators now through a through a organization called help me see and i was very much involved in developing it and i've tried it's it, it, there's no feel of sics right. than doing on an enucleated eye or a goat side so that's the kind of feel you can get so these are simple simulations you now for example you have a goat eye you know and you have removed part of the nucleus inside this we have been showing for several years but whenever i go to places i ask are you doing this they are not practicing it's as simple as that sunday you go to any market you will get enough number of goat eyes you know it's not uh, you don't have to get any signature for the eye donation you know only that fellow who butchers he has to sign and say okay fine we'll give you so much of goats and then you put a human nucleus which you have harvested not from sics from some of the phaco complications which we knew showed no no where you bring it from the vitreous to the anterior chamber so you get those human nucleus into the goat side and you can practice any technique so you can begin with and also in between you can go back see i want to learn phaco chop now i want to learn how a my loop works now so some of my residents and some doctors now they tried my loop practice now who are very good surgeons so you can always go back and see how it works on new techniques also and then the most important part in a training again in any place where you are ideally you have to select cases you can't take a complex case to begin with you say there's no cases and you can if you go with a small pupil i'm sure you're going to have not smaller problems but bigger problems so you need to select ideal cases ideally ns2 to 3 which is neither too soft not too hard and also a well dilated pupil and again remember these are people who are walking on a platform alan crandall always says somebody walking on a platform in india even then you can get accidents but ideally you should not have an accident so you want to do the best for somebody you now who improves to 6 9 6 12 minus 2 or minus 3 and then you say that you have a complication on that you really feel bad so avoid some of these issues you know which people have been talking from morning and which you hear a lot to begin with don't take eyes which are deep set you know which are smaller you know like 21 diopters uh, 21 axial lens shallow chambers where the, where the iris can really crowd where there are hazy corneas you know and then when you have uh, other problems like subluxation or dislocation try to avoid some of these to begin with and always uh, observe surgeons if you get an opportunity you now you go and observe surgeons when they are operating i'm sure you no know, you'll you'll pick up a lot of tips and tricks from them so once you have started doing once you start looking at them you know how they do that step comfortably how they avoid a dm detachment you now when they do a side port or a main tunnel how they have a very good valve how they don't hydrate the wound much there are a lot of things and uh, which you can observe and then you can uh, uh, comfortably pick up a lot of these skills and having a tailored approach you know here we train them in small incision and when they are taking them to do a phaco we make them to a to a temporal scleral tunnel so if you have a temp some approach like that then everybody can easily comfortably adapt to it and also follow that uh, kind of a assembly system so that they can comfortably change over and whenever you no know, you have problem you no know, when places like here we have several surgeons operating so you know that you can smell a problem some of the problems minu was showing you know you know your fold you know your snap sign 
you still want to continue, then of course you need Manojan. Now we have uh, Manavis and so many people to help, but still, if you can sense a problem early and you call for help, the visual results are going to be much, much better. And uh, I think we have to aim for that kind of safe surgery. And this is very important. Now I've been uh, uh, helping a lot of our residents, now uh, letting them uh, record their surgeries and show those surgeries. Many of the times, to begin with, you have somebody watching. And after you begin, you start doing, there is nobody to watch you. That's what happens in our teaching system. So that is when we try to improvise and we try to make ourselves better. So that's when you record, you go and catch hold of them, you sit with them, you show them, and you revise and learn some tips from them. So that's very important. There are several ways, you know, you can't complain that you don't have a good recording system. We have also come up with some brilliant ideas of record, recording with a Raspberry Pi system, a GoPro camera, which is very less expensive for 50,000 rupees. For a, for a lakh, you get beautiful recording systems which can go through your side port or through your beam splitter. There are several ways you can do amazing recording and show your cases. And this is very important as teaching institutes, we follow it. It will be nice even if an individual can do it. But somebody has to watch and score it. You can't score for you. Now we have a, a PDP expert who scores. On the other day, I said, what is the score for my Rexis? You know, he gave me three. And he said, it's a flax case, man. The laser has done the Rexis, are you still giving me three? <laughs> oh, that's, the, that's, that's how they score. No, they are so tough sometimes in scoring. But you'll have to be, uh, you'll have to be tough in the beginning and then, then they say, once they improvise the technique, you know, people who, who don't understand Oscar may not uh, really understand what I just said. No, there's a different steps when you score them from one to five so that you, for each step, there is an Oscar score which takes you to the next level. And track the progress like this. So once your training is going ahead, you know how better you are. So if you are dipping somewhere, your score is dipping, then I think you need more training in that particular step so that you master that step. So every technique now in cataract, in glaucoma has got Oscar scoring and they are trying to introduce Oscar scoring for other subspecialties also. So and then you can have a good progress uh, report. And then we do this meticulously having complication meeting, reviewing when they have a complication, why did they have, how did they have and how they can avoid. And also we have a monitoring system for all our cataract surgeries, which I think many of you are aware, which is called the cataract software uh, monitoring system or the complication monitoring system. So that at the end of a month, we generate a report for each surgeon, depending on the octet score they get for the complications, they get a score, they can see who is the best surgeon, who is the average surgeon. Anybody can log in and see their own details. I can log in and see anybody's details. So this gives you an overall idea about comparing a surgeon with the system. So what resurgery is, the complications and all that, uncorrected, best corrected, every analysis can be done with this program and we get a chart and also a comparison which helps us and also reminds both the team and also the individuals. Now, if somebody's score is less, I keep working with them to improve. So, I get a report like this and every surgeon gets a report like this. And before I finish, I just uh, want to say again, learn from once you have mastered, don't feel that that's the end of the day. There are so many ideas which are coming up in this world. XNet is one great idea which you all tried in the morning. No, this is a simple thing. These are these are simple things which I learned in my practice over the years. Now you can polish a capsule. You can just do a saline jetting. No, which which washes off your posterior capsule. So you pick up some of these ideas. These are all not new ideas. This is what I picked up over the years. I'm just showing you. So this is an idea which I shared many years back, and then you now people are quoting it and they are also using it called a merry-go-round technique. Now sometimes in the pupil is small, you don't see sub incisional cortex. You feel you have removed everything. Now but there may be <laughs> good amount of cortex there. Once you see, once that lens rolls around, you can see some of the lenses are very easy to dial. Some are difficult like Acrisoft. But I say the auto view, the auto flex, the sensor, the three piece or single piece are very easy to dial. And then you see the amount of cortex coming out. So these are all some of the tips and tricks no, which you can learn over the years. So this is uh, one thing which we were just seeing briefly on uh, UVIT cataract in the morning. 
So we also do a lot of UV hydration where you have to do a peripheral iridectomy. This is a small tip I learned, you know, put your cyclodialysis through the another side port and bring the iris out through the main side port which you have already created and do a very comfortable. Even if you put your vitrector inside and try to cut the iris, you may have difficulty sometime. You can even da damage the zonules. These are some of the simple tips which you can see by observing in conferences, talking with people, discussing with people and then you take your surgery to the next level. These are some of the simple ideas which we have also uh, tried to share with the people like a stromal puncture for toric marking, a, a novel device for holding the eye in the wet lab. So these are some of the devices which have uh, come from uh, Pondicherry and there are several resources, you know, you have iTubes and YouTubes for us, you know, which we didn't have 20 years back, you know, for calling my parents in my medical school, you know, why do you call your parents, you know, mainly when the purse is empty. So I had to go and do a trunk call booking and then he'll say, sir, sada kala lightning kala, first time in a puri la, inna pa the lightning kala, lightning kala double charter, purse la kaas illa pani sada kal podupa. So Anamari, so you were, we were like that, but now in your mobile, there is every single resource for you. So you will have to be uh, conscious of what is good for you and what is not good for you and learn from these uh, uh, CMEs and conferences and also uh, we have uh, a nice channel called Orotube and uh, I am sure many of you are following it. We have a lot of updates. Even this meeting is going to be updated uh, by Tuesday evening. Thank you again for your patient listening.